I'm Mary Cummins of Animal Advocates, and today we have as a special guest Leslie Rink of the Opossum Society. Hello, Leslie. How are you? Hello, Mary. How are you? So tell us a little bit, what is the Opossum Society? Uh, the Opossum Society is a, a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. and uh, it consists of thousands of members. And what we do is rescue, rehabilitate, and we educate people about possums. So how did you get interested in opossums? Well, um, I found a baby possum about 10 years ago and had to learn uh, kind of cold turkey how to uh, rescue and raise it. And I contacted the Opossum Society and contacted mm -hmm. another Mary and uh, I went online, and our website is www.opossumsociety.org, and you can go online there and find out information. And so I kind of, once you get into it, I learn more and more about them. And they're very interesting creatures, and a lot of people don't understand the basics about them, how long they've been around, and they've been around mm -hmm. since dinosaur age. They're one of the oldest surviving mammals. So we're just trying to educate people on uh, how to live with them in urban mm -hmm. life, yeah. So if someone were at their house and they found an opossum in their yard and uh, maybe they didn't want it there, how would they get, in, get a hold of you and what should they do? Uh, they can go on to our website and also they can, if they don't have an internet access, mm -hmm. they can go uh, call information on the phone and uh, Opossum Society, we're out of, based out of Irvine. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, by area code what members can help you and you can contact one of them. I'm up in the San Fernando Valley, so I get a lot of calls up in that area. They route them to me. If someone were to find, um, I guess, a small opossum or a baby opossum, what should they do? Uh, first thing, um, they want to uh, get it in a warm, a warm towel, keep it warm in a box in a quiet area away from dogs or cats or any mm -hmm. other predators or children in an isolated room. And then you want to go f try to find a wildlife rehabilitator. How can you tell if it's a baby or an adult? I know sometimes there's... Some of them are a little bit smaller. Some yeah, of them. Um, well, we have a little chart that we go by. Um, if it's seven inches from nose to butt, not including the tail, mm -hmm. that's a juvenile, and it's about ready to be released on its own. It's probably fallen off its mother's back and, in the process, and it's now on its own, and people think it's a baby. Mm -hmm. A baby, you know, we have newborns, pinky, where they're like the size of your thumb, oh, with no hair, mm -hmm. and their eyes are closed. And those are obviously, you know, infants, orphan, that they need mm -hmm. help right away. because. Normally, they would be in the mother's pouch because they so, are marsupials. So if it's like under seven inches, then it's a baby and it needs help? Right, yeah. Okay. Yes, that's and, a good guideline. Okay. And, um, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you want to show him while he's out? We, oh, yeah, we got, sure. We brought one with us, so we'll, sh we'll show Let's her see. now. She's a rescue. Oh. And uh, I don't so know if I'll hold her. This would be considered a juvenile? Yes, this one, she will be getting ready to release probably in the next couple weeks. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can get the log off here for you okay. guys so you can get a better view. But uh -huh. I've had her uh, about a month now, and uh, what happened is the uh, dog had got a hold of the mother and killed her, and she was the only surviving Hello. one. But here she is, what and uh, yeah, she's getting uh -huh. close to seven inches, but she's doing very good. Mm -hmm. And I have grapes in here as one of their foods they like to eat. What other uh, types of foods do they like to eat? Uh, well, they, they like to eat snails, uh -huh. cockroaches, oh, that's great. grasshoppers, crickets, uh, mm -hmm. small mice, um, any overripe fruit that will fall on the ground. They like grapes that will fall off the grapevine or mm -hmm. um, apricots, any fruit tree, oranges. Oh, they will, uh, they like all that. So they're really good little scavengers, and if people leave them in their yard, they'll help clean mm -hmm. up the insects and snails and slugs, and also cat food. They love cat mm -hmm. food. So if you have a cat or dog and you leave the food out at night, they'll be tempted to come and eat it and visit your yard frequently. Are they dangerous? Would they be dangerous for your cat? No. They coexist just fine and, you know, they've been around for millions of years, so mm -hmm. uh, they're fitting quite well. And, and they're very docile animals. As you can see, she's not very aggressive. They're very shy. Mm -hmm. They're nocturnal. They only come out at night. Oh, okay. So a lot of people don't even know they have possums and, and then they go out late at night and they take the trash out and they see a possum and they get mm -hmm. scared and they're like, oh, it's a huge rat. What is a huge <laughs> rat doing in there? It's the biggest thing I've ever seen. And usually they will freeze. Mm -hmm. They get scared and they'll freeze. And that's, and if a dog will bark at them, then they play possum. They'll go into the possum mode. And a lot of people will mm -hmm. think they're dead when actually they're playing possum. How long do they stay in that passed out playing possum? Uh, the possum is kind of a coma-like state, and it could be anywhere from 40 minutes to four hours. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So what should they do if they see an opossum that's just laying there? How do they know if it's dead or not? Okay, if they obviously don't see any wounds or bleeding. Uh -huh. um, they want to put it in a shallow box mm -hmm. in a quiet area, like 
in the garage or back someplace, when it comes back, it can and you go, go back oh. into the wild and be released. Um, you know, put bring the dogs in the house and give it the benefit of the doubt. It may, may have just gone into possum mode because the dog scared it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and another thing they like to do is they'll drool, drool uh -huh. and uh, that kind of gives a sign to the predator that, oh, maybe they're sick, so they want them to leave them alone because they're bas basically slow moving and, you know, defenseless, so they'll open their mouth and Play, play possum. <laughs> I've heard sometimes they get stuck in trash cans. What, what oh, would yeah. someone do if you find one in a trash can? Well, the easiest thing would just be to tip it over and mm -hmm. again pull the dogs in and let the possum come out on its own. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have one and you're not sure how to scoop it into a box, I always tell people, you know, heavy towel or even a broom to scoop it in the mm -hmm. box, you know, if you're afraid to touch it, and, uh, and let it go on its own when it comes around. Do they have any diseases or anything that might be dangerous for humans? Uh, no, I think there's only been like four cases of rabies in the United States uh -huh. in uh -huh. a few, like eight year time. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they're not very susceptible to rabies because their body temperature is a lot cooler hmm. than normal mammals. So this is why they survived all these millions of years. And uh, so people shouldn't be afraid of having rabies or any other stuff, you know. If someone, let's say they were frightened and they didn't want opossums in their yards, what should they do so they wouldn't have an opossum in their yard? Well, first thing, they got to remove the three basic uh, things, you know, food, shelter, and water. Mm -hmm. So if you have cat food out at night, you should uh, bring that in. If you have overripe fruit laying on the ground, clean that up. Mm -hmm. uh, remove water sources, bird feeders, uh, you know, water dishes, stuff like that. And clean up your yard because uh, they like to make their homes in wood piles or junk piles people have in their backyard. This is hiding places, so. And if they have any entrances to, um, you know, attics or basements, cover up the holes, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. So how many opossums would you say the Opossum Society takes care of each year? Oh, well, we have um, hundreds of members, and mm -hmm. I think we take in like 4,000 opossums wow, a year. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. That's yeah. a lot of opossums. It's a lot of opossums. Well, you know, the average litter is from 8 to 11 mm -hmm. in a litter. So when you get a mother in, or let's say the mother's perished, and then you have the baby, so there's eight to 11 there. Mm -hmm. And I, the reason why they have so many is because, uh, you know, out in the wild, a lot of them don't survive. Oh. So, you know, uh, predators are humans, mm -hmm. you know, dogs, cats, How long cars. do they generally live? Out in the wild, between one to two years. Oh. Yeah, in captivity, oh. they could live, live three years if they're, you know, mm -hmm. not How often do they um, mate? How many litters a year do they have? Um, in California here, the weather's uh, more warm, and they can have two to three litters a year. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of opossums. Yeah, it is. I can see why you'd get so many. In California, we have a lot of fruit trees, orange trees, trees, mm. and, uh, you know, there's a lot of food here, so we see a lot in Southern California. Oh. Mm -hmm. Have you had any really wild, like, opossum rescue stories or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I just, um, you know, a lot of times they get uh, caught in fan housings up in the attic mm -hmm. somehow, and they'll go in one way and they don't know how to back out, oh. or, mm -hmm. you know, behind a water heater, uh, central air, things like that. So, you know, you just got to go in there and, and get them out. So and you physically go out there? And oh, get yes. Them out? Mm -hmm. A lot of times I, you know, uh -huh. if the person doesn't feel comfortable doing it or they can't get them out, I'll come out and help them get the possum out of the stuck situation. Mm -hmm and that's very important. So what is like the, the most common situation when you end up getting an opossum? Is it hit by a car or attacked by a dog or poisoned or? Uh, most of the time I'd say dogs. Oh. The dogs, mm -hmm. uh, they, they um, kill the mother and then the mm -hmm. babies are scattered around in mm -hmm. the yard or some are still in the pouch, but I do get a lot hit by cars. And a lot of times they will uh, bring me the mother with the babies and then I have to extract the baby and then raise them. Mm -hmm. And then when they get about just about this age, she's just she's about there. Right. This is when I release her and uh, she, she goes on her own. Yeah, she's, she's done very well. She was very sick when I got her mm -hmm. and uh, I nursed her back oh, and uh, yeah, she's tired. <laughs> But uh, yeah, she's doing very good. And they're single animals. They don't really need to socialize in groups. So she'll do just fine on her own and mm -hmm. she'll uh, move on, but she's very, very healthy and bright and alert and being a good guest today. <laughs> so does the Opossum Society do any events or education or training? Do they offer anything like that? Yeah, we have uh, training classes. We have uh, twice a year orphan training classes. So if people are interested in becoming a member 
you can go on our website and become a member and help with orphan rescue because we with the high volume the numbers yeah. we have we need a lot of members because it's round the clock feeding and, and taking care of them and we also do fundraisers um, mm -hmm. we do the Long Beach Animal Walk um, every year and we do a lot of other uh, shows you know we had one at the Griffith Park an animal show the Wildlife Way Station was there and other animal people and uh, so we like to spread the word and educate is the key mm -hmm. to for the possum that because a lot of people important are misunderstood about the possum. They, they think they're big rats and they carry diseases when, mm -hmm. when actually they find out that they're good for the garden and they eat those pesky insects, snails, cockroaches, then people want to leave them in the yard because they're good. Mm -hmm. I know some people have said that they look ugly to them, but this one looks pretty cute. No, this one's, uh, yeah, this one, they're very cute. I don't you know, see any teeth or anything? Yeah, well, they have 50 teeth, so they wow. have a lot of teeth. Mm -hmm. and, and when they're scared, they'll open their mouth and, and show them off just kind of back mm -hmm. off the predator because they don't have much defense besides playing possum, opening their mouth and drooling. Mm -hmm. So if they pretend like they're dead, they figure the predator will leave them alone. And, uh, but other otherwise they, they don't jump. Mm -hmm. Their tail is prehensile and they use it like a fifth arm to hang to help them balance mm -hmm. themselves when they're climbing up a tree. And they don't dig. A lot of people think the possums dig, but their, their paws are very soft pads and they have opposable thumbs. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, they're very docile, you know, as you can see. And you know, mothers, uh, you have to really back them into a corner to get a reaction, mm -hmm. like from a mother, you know. But otherwise, if you just back away, they'll, they'll move on their own. And they're transient creatures, so they, they move on about every couple of days, as long as, you know, you don't have a constant food source for them. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they'll move on and, and go about their business. So besides uh, trying to recruit more people to help you with all these opossums, uh, what else is the um, opossum society? Any other help that you guys need, or well, we always need um, you know medical blankets, uh, the usual supplies, and we ask for people to donate. Um, mm -hmm. And money would be great, but blankets, uh, always good. syringes, mm -hmm. uh, if they have uh, S black or any groups like that want to donate, we we're more than glad because. Uh, you know, definitely towels is a key thing. We can't oh. get enough mm -hmm. towels, and uh, cages are always good. But uh, yeah, we have a lot of generous people that once oh, they cool. find out about the possum, they realize uh, they're a great asset, and and they leave them leave them be. Well, this one seems pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. But you know, once she gets out there, oh, there she is yawning again. <laughs> she just showed her teeth I guess off. Guess we're boring her. Yeah, I wish. Come on. Oh, sorry. Come on. Come on. Show those teeth off again. Okay. Show your teeth. Come on. Oh, there's a poop. Early wipes. Yeah, there she is there. Oh. She seems pretty okay. sweet. I don't know how anyone could be frightened of her. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if I could get her out or not. Ooh. Well, no, Maybe she, not. no. She says, no, not, not today. Mood. Yeah. <laughs> I try not to handle her because I want her to have a good chance of going out in the wild, but mm -hmm. that's a great picture of her there. Yeah, so. Uh, very photogenic. Yeah, very photogenic. Let's see, is there anything else? I'm trying to think. Let's see. Well, what are their uh, natural predators? What type of animals are the ones who dogs go after them? Dogs and cats. Oh, dogs and yeah. cats. Yeah, and humans, cars. Uh -huh. yeah, I've seen some moving. opossums, and they're pretty big. Could a cat really attack one? Uh, when they're big, probably not. But at this age, a cat yeah, could get it. Yeah, a cat could get it, probably this age and smaller. Uh -huh. You know, if, if it's abandoned, the cats will be curious, and mm -hmm. they'll play with them. And the dogs, they play with them, too, and they don't realize how strong oh. they can kill them. I think when they're bigger, mm -hmm. it's a little tougher to have to be a bigger dog. But usually cars would get the bigger ones when they're crossing the road, you know. And usually um, at this age, they would climb on the mother's back. Mm -hmm. And then what happens, Even the mother... Even at this size? Yeah, really? at this oh. size, they'd, they'd be on the mother's back, and one by one they'd fall off the back, and that's mm -hmm. how they go on their own. So a lot of times people see one in the yard this size thinking it's a baby mm -hmm. and I'll say no this is when they fall off the mother's back naturally and this is when they go on their way and they start living their own life. So you would just tell them maybe keep the dogs in? Yeah, keep you the dogs in, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. dogs yeah. give them a better chance, right. Yeah, uh -huh. and, and I tell people, you know, they live there, this is where they live, don't relocate them, you know, mm -hmm. and we got to educate people about uh, just letting wildlife live oh, yeah. in, Plus in it urban sounds areas. Like it's beneficial yeah. for your property, I'd yeah. want to have a few there. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, some. <laughs> yeah, I mean, once I tell people about the snails and the cockroaches, they're yeah. very excited, and they usually mm -hmm. leave them alone, and they realize they serve a purpose, you know, they're nature's little sanitation cleaners, and uh, they're, they're good to have in your garden, and, and people should just learn to live with them. Oh, I agree. And they're so, great little creatures. So if someone wanted to volunteer to take care of babies, how often would they have to feed them? 
Uh, when they're little pinky newborns, it'd be like every two hours. Mm -hmm. And then as they get bigger, it'd be every three hours, four hours, and then, you know, until they weaned off formula, and then you'd introduce food for them, grapes and stuff like that, soft foods. And then eventually when they start, uh, you know, getting bigger, they'll be able to eat on their own snails, crickets, and, and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. they're omnivores, so they eat a wide variety of food. How would, uh, what type of meat do they eat if they're omnivores? Um, they like uh, small mice. They will uh -huh. eat that carrion, um, dead animals. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, rats. Any, they go for wow. those, yeah. And, uh, Don't need any pesticide control or insecticides no, with them around? No, no. And also, uh, they will uh, go after fish. If you have a koi oh, really? pond mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. carp, you want to cover that up. So they will go in there and try to get that. So if you don't want them eating your fish, mm -hmm. cover your pond up with a fence. Wire or mesh. Or yeah, wire or mesh, oh, okay, yeah, chain link sense. or something. Then you yeah. don't have to worry about yeah. raccoons either. Right, right, raccoons would definitely are big fishers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and raccoons also would be predators for them too. Oh. Raccoons can be very mm -hmm. aggressive and... What about owls? Do owls also go after them? I guess they could when, if mm -hmm. they're in an area of owls, but usually I think owls are in higher elevation, right? Oh. And, and these sure. possums don't do good in higher elevation. See, a lot of people will think, oh, okay, I have a possum, I'm going to take it and dump it up in the mountains because it mm -hmm. doesn't belong here, when in mm -hmm. fact, they do live in the city, and this is where they they survive with the fruit trees. When they take them, let's say, take them to Angel's Crest mm -hmm. Forest, they have no chance of survivability up oh. there. There's no Why fruit trees. Oh, because of no In food. the high elevation, oh. there's no fruit trees there. Mm -hmm. There's not food for them to survive on or mm -hmm. maybe a water source, and so they become a predator for wild animals up there. That could be, you know, mountain lions, coyotes, mm -hmm. whatever. So we try to talk people into leaving them where they're at. And if their dogs are barking, um, bring your dogs inside and let the possum move on because it, it's transient and will move on in a couple days. Oh, someone told me that maybe you should have like a hollow log or something in there for them to have a safe place. Does that make any sense? Um, I guess they can naturally if they find one. I mean, I have oh. this here, mm -hmm. you know, and you can get these in a pet store. But, you know, people have maybe wood piles and they would naturally Oh, go hide wedge in there, there, hide in there. So yeah, hollow log would be safe for them too, yeah. Uh -huh. It just depends on the threat. If they feel very threatened, then they may go into possum mode right away. Then you still want to bring your dogs in. The best bet is to bring your dog in if it's barking and causing the possum distress and let the possum move on mm -hmm. into another yard. But uh, yeah, she's, she's doing good. She's eating her grapes and uh, she's being a good guest today. Mm -hmm. She's very sweet. Yes, she is. And their hearing uh -huh. is very acute. See, their I ears, see they're, ears almost like, they're almost like bad ears. Uh -huh. So they've got very keen hearing. Mm -hmm. Their smell is very acute. And uh, their vision isn't the keenest thing. That's why that's almost uh -huh. seem they just run right across the road and they get hit because mm -hmm. they're yeah, kind of like tunnel vision. So uh -huh. the eyesight isn't their best feature. Is it just only bad eyesight in the daytime? Or is it more at it's night? It's acute oh. at nighttime, yeah. Oh, okay. It's better at night. But it's not like owl's eyes, you know, mm -hmm. or some of the other night creatures where mm -hmm. they're very big. Mm -hmm. But you can see her ear, she hears every little sound and yeah, she's kind like she's of turning around. like a little radar, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, and their tail's interesting. They don't hang by the tail like some of the pictures say. Mm -hmm. They will temporarily grab onto a branch while they work their way to another branch, kind of as an extra oh. fifth arm. Mm -hmm. For balance. Yeah, for balance. But, uh, well, that's interesting. They sound like absolutely amazing creatures. They are. Everyone and should have a few in their backyard to take care of their garden for them. Yes, and they probably do, and they don't realize it. They, mm -hmm. you know, because they come out anywhere from dusk till dawn, and if they see one in daylight hours, it could mm -hmm. be a mom foraging for food oh, in the dawn because normally they shouldn't be out. So if they do see one out during the day, mm -hmm. um, it may be injured, and then they'd want to, you know, kind of observe and see if there's any wounds or blood or mm -hmm. what's going on, and if. If it's still like noon and it's still out, they may want to contact a rehabilitator. Oh. Mm -hmm. And also you can uh, call like the animal shelters. They now have lists of people, wildlife rehabilitators, to uh, contact. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're becoming more user-friendly, the animal control centers now. If someone were to find, say, a, see an opossum on the side of the road, um, how would you know if it's really you know, if it's, if it's dead or not, or if it has babies, or what should someone do? Oh, that's an interesting point. Is, um, I had a fellow up in uh, Sand Canyon, actually, mm -hmm. and he was driving by on Sierra Highway, and there was a possum curled off the side. And he thought, this is strange, and him being an animal buff, he mm -hmm. had to turn around and stop. 
And when he stopped, he realized he first thought it was dead, but then he saw her breathing. Oh. And then he further looked and he saw the babies hanging out of oh, her pouch. Uh -huh. So then he scooped it up with a sweatshirt. He called the animal shelter. They referred mm -hmm. him to me. And uh, actually, my husband was up that way and he drove up and oh, picked up the perfect. possum. Yeah. And she had been um, attacked by a coyote and had several oh, wounds on uh -huh. the back of her head. So we immediately warmed her up, uh, got her some fluids. Mm -hmm. I took her to the vet the next day, got her all stitched up, um, and her and the babies were fine. There was only three babies left. We think some other ones were drugged along the way, but oh, uh, thanks to bad. him being concerned, um, he mm -hmm. stopped and pulled off the road and you could tell it was it was in hole, it wasn't you know squished or anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, if you do, if, you, if you're brave enough and you want to drive <laughs> off the freeway there. <laughs> and take a chance mm -hmm. and not get hit and save an animal, you can do that. I that mean, would be me. I, yeah, that's uh -huh. me too, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, he, he did a great job and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really great when people take the extra step to help mm -hmm. save them because, uh, you know, it's, they're living creatures and they're helping us. I mean, mm -hmm. without them, it'd, we'd be missing a, a link, you know, to help clean up the leftover food that may, yeah. you know, fester on the ground disease. and disease and bacteria. So mm -hmm. they serve a purpose and uh, if people just, you know, step back and take a look, they'll, they'll realize they need to leave them alone. And I don't know if you can see his opposable thumbs, but they're right there right now. They're really oh, cute. Back paws. Yeah, oh, the back yeah. paws there. They're kind of like oh, thumbs on his like back paws. Thumbs. So they can climb uh -huh. like, I don't know, chameleon kind of uh -huh. has like where they can climb a branch like uh -huh. that. I'm sorry. Did I scare you? It's I okay. Let me turn it Ooh. around here. Honey. Sorry. Am I moving it too quick for the camera? <laughs> there we go. There, he, there she is. I didn't name her, but... Uh, uh -huh. Maybe Lucky is a good name. <laughs> Let's see what else here. Um, yeah, um, just, uh, and also on this flyer we have here, mm -hmm. um, we can send this to you, and it has interesting possum facts on there, and if you find a baby of what size, what to do. And one of the key things we stress is no cow's milk, please. Mm -hmm. We actually would prefer people not to feed them until a rehabilitator gets them. So if they find them, just put it in a box, keep them keep warm, it warm, get on the phone. And not on direct heat because their body temperature is lower than mm -hmm. ours, so you want to have it like low temp, like like lukewarm. Mm -hmm. But keep it warm and, you know, and safe and quiet. And then someone will come pick it up and then we can raise them until they're ready okay. to be released like this one. So uh, when will she be ready to be released? Um, probably in the next couple of weeks. She's oh, about seven uh -huh. inches and uh, mm -hmm. she's ready to go soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is about the size. If you see one about this size, this should be no concern. Leave it where it's at. Don't, you know, box it up. Unless, obviously, it's obviously sick, mm -hmm. you know, or something's going on. You know, if there's you blood or anything. Just bring the dog in and bring the cat in yeah, until yeah. it's gone. Yeah, and always safe, secure area. You know, these are great containers here because they can't get out and they got a mm -hmm. lid. And, and I like to put dark towels in there because right now you can see she's very... Yeah, scared of movement. Bit, yeah. yeah, well, we got well a it's bright lights, light. Yeah, so talking daytime. Yeah, and she's not used she to this, so know. she's a little traumatized. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, but she's been cooperative. Yes, she has. Well, those are some interesting facts about opossums and the opossum society. And and again, how can they find you online? What's the um... www.opossumsocietyus.org. Okay, I love that dot org. <laughs> And you guys are a nonprofit organization? Yes, we're a 501c oh, okay. nonprofit organization. So all donations will be tax deductible. Tax deductible. And oh, inside good. there's a little form mm -hmm. that if you want to become a member or you want to donate money, it's all tax deductible. And you'll get these nice facts about possums. And we also, on our website, you can buy uh, t shirts, stuffed animals, stuff like mm -hmm. that. And all proceeds, of course, go towards the med medical and uh, supplies for possums. Well, that sounds great. Thank well, you. thank you, Leslie. Thank you so much for being here thank today. You. It's been a pleasure. I'm Mary Cummins of Animal Advocates and Leslie Rink, Leslie of, Rink the of the Possum, Possum Society. Society. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you.